Welcome to the home of the shrimps. We're in Morecambe. We're What'd Tyson you call me? Fury. Not you. I wasn't talking about you just yet. You'll get your introduction in a minute. It's the home of the shrimps. That's the football team. Nothing to do with fighters. We're not doing any sizes jokes here whatsoever. Tyson Fury, all six foot nine of him, will be here very shortly. As will Frank Warren. And as will, hopefully, Josh Denzel. He was meant to be here, but he's had a problem going north on his train. Most people in London have a problem going north on this train. Me? No problem from the Midlands. Carl? No problem from Belfast. People in London? Kaput. It's going to be a conference to not officially launch. We've already done that before Christmas. We did it in January. We've had loads and loads of official launches for Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury. This will be just a little bit of, well, Tyson Fury. And I'll be absolutely honest with you, Carl Frampton. Um... I'm not quite sure what Tyson will deliver today because Tyson has a habit when you expect nothing of delivering something yeah. incredibly big. Yeah, uh, look, we're all waiting to see what, what we get from What today. we get. <laughs> it's, it's a press conference, obviously, to talk about the Fury and Usyk fight. Usyk isn't here. It's Fury on his own. Um, who knows what we're going to get, but I'm excited. Bonsai, as always, anything to do with Tyson Fury gets me excited. So, of course... You can take out whatever way you want. You, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that the correct way. Of course, the, the, the original date was back in February. Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk, all four of the belts. The first time that the four recognised belts had ever been contested at heavyweight. It's been done in other weights half a dozen times, but never, ever at heavyweight. Although Alexander Usyk had done it down at Cruiserweight a few years ago, travelling all around the world to collect all four of the belts. An amazing achievement. This will be about Tyson Fury. Maybe it's talking about the eye injury that he had that put him out of the last fight at about two weeks' mm. notice. Also talking, as he always does, about the future. Perhaps he'll retire for the ninth time. Who knows? Yeah. Perhaps he'll unretire for the eighth time. That's just the way it works. There's no point guessing. We'll see. We'll There's see no what point he says. guessing. And, and it could be it could be something that we haven't even thought about that comes up today. So we'll just we'll just wait and see. I think. <laughs> Now, it seems like forever ago that we were in London to officially announce the, the fight, Alexander Usyk against Tyson Fury, where it was given the ring of fire name. That just seems to me, I mean, that was just forever ago. Yeah. And it just, it, fighters can change. It's yeah. like six months ago. Not, but by the time they get in the ring, it will be nearly absolutely. six months. Absolutely. It can be, it's, you know, people as they get on in their careers, six months could be an act, you know, a long time and we could see deteriorations and, and different things. I'm not really expecting to see that. I know people are making a big deal out of the cut um, people were disappointed when it happened at the time but this is these are things that happen and, and when when you're sparring especially when you're big guys well, you, you 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 suffered an injury a fluke in injury yeah. what four days before a fight yeah and then you had an opponent fall over in the shower yeah. the night before a fight yeah. in fact you, you're bad luck don't touch so, me and uh, the sound made up and i imagine if i'm someone listening to these stories i'm going nonsense mm. that's made up but these things happen so um I, I, I think that the fight now, Fury and Usyk, is probably, although everyone was disappointed at the time that it had to be rescheduled, it's probably a bigger fight now. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking forward did, to did it. Did you think a little bit, Carl, and I've got to be careful how I word this, that that whole sort of January period leading up to the cut, the cut came the day after Tyson sent out some pictures, which were genuine. Yeah. Just the, the best shape I've ever yeah. seen him in. I mean, ever seen him in since he was, even when he was 18 or 19, he wasn't in shape as good as that. He wasn't as, wasn't as ripped as that. wasn't as cut as that. He looked in brilliant shape. The next morning, he gets the eye injury. Savage, savage cut on, on his right, on his right eyelid. Um, do you think that, and this just seems, I've got to be careful how I say this, that that whole January was really low key. Mm. You know, we were, we were getting closer and closer to the fight. Mm. But did it feel like we were about to have the, uh, the heavyweight fight for all four belts for the first time ever in history? Did it feel that way to you? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, did it? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to try and think back. Try and what, think back before the, because yeah. it was, a, it was obviously a big letdown. Yeah. When the news that he, the Look, cut I, came I, out. I always thought the fight was going to happen. It wasn't these guy, one of these kind of conspiracy guys that thought this fight's never happening. I, I was looking forward to it. I genuinely thought it was going to happen. And I understand, you know what, you know what people are like in this day and age sure. with social media? Um, Especially in our business. Carl. Yeah, but I mean, this, people get cut in sparring. I've, yeah. been, cut, I've no. been cut in sparring before, and this is what happens, and, and fights have to be called off or postponed. I'm not, even, I'm not really talking about whether I thought the fight would happen or not. I just thought that, you know, I knew the fight was happening. My tickets were booked for Saudi. My hotel was booked for Saudi. I knew what I'd be doing. We both knew what our duties would be with TNT. We were all set. We were, all, we were on our way. I'm, I'm talking more about the sort of thing that it hadn't 
you know, we weren't like going, I can't wait. Like, for instance, you weren't doing a daily countdown, were you? Yeah. I've only got 32 days to go, 31 yeah, days to go. Yeah, maybe. Where, whereas now. Now we are. I, now we are. Yeah. Now we're getting closer to May 18th, which in some ways in early April looks like a ways off, but it's not. There is a definite countdown clock in place now that I didn't feel in January, but I do feel now. Yeah, and they've got this kind of, isn't there a a fan or something if, if there's a pull out again or 10 some, million something like that just what's that to the boys you know what you, I mean if one pulls out the other it's one just, the other one 10 million yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah um, but I, I just think that it has to happen now doesn't it unless yeah. there's some other freak accident no. someone else is injured badly but I imagine the boys will be wrapping themselves up in cotton wool yeah. as much as possible although you can't completely do that because it's mm. a fake game and we yeah. have to train hard and we have to yeah. spar but They'll be taking a safety first approach. Um, Fury maybe wearing full face guards to stop getting cut. Who knows? But I think that I think the fight happens. And also, you know, that the guy that did it, the young Croatian, his name I've forgotten. And it was it was quite reckless. He, you yeah. know, I was watching the clip of that, and just and, and obviously we know what's coming up because it's the clip of the cut. But he's he was quite low with his head. He was yeah. lunging quite a bit. So, and that, which I don't see Usyk. I don't see no, Usyk trying not, to put the butt not, in. That makes no not, sense. Not Usyk style at all. He's a slick, smart, clever boxer. Um, maybe the kid was a southpaw and, and he was having a go. Who knows? Look, yeah. there, there needs to be context to it. It may have been Fury's. Eight thrown, and it might have been the kid's second, and he's yeah. trying to put it on Fury. What, who knows? I, what, I, what's I think it on? was. I think it was late in the sparring session on that particular. It was in the morning. It was yeah. really early in the morning, Saudi time. So it was really early I, 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 in Europe. Um, but I think it. And I think it was quite late. Yeah. Into the into and, the session, and, and Fury's may have, you know, after eight rounds or whatever he's had, may have been tiring. The kids wanting the impress, yeah. jumped in and trying to fight a style that he wasn't meant to fight yeah. uh, who, who knows what's happened unless you're inside the team we don't really know and, and by the way any, whenever there's a zillion trillion rumours that's when you start as soon as there's more than two opinions on one thing in boxing that's when you have to dismiss both of those opinions and go in search of the third once you find the third you dismiss the third and go in search of the, search of the fourth that's just the way it works what I did like was that there was obviously class of music once mm. the cut had been discovered filmed documented proved to be actually true and the fight was instantly then moved back postponed and a new mm. date was found instant quickly what i did like particularly was that Usyk then went and did i think 10 rounds of sparring that afternoon yeah i seen that which, um, I, which i thought was brilliant i mean what what what's not the leg about Usyk? Uh, i mean he's globally be universally a bit careful. you in tyson fury land yeah. so just keep, keep no it, i know keep it down a little i bit. think I mean, even deep down tyson probably likes does he loves man, him you know they're, they're I mean? friends um and i think you can see a, a great relationship between them two once the fighting's done and this game's over, but um, yeah, there's just Fury, or sorry, Usyk. Fury's special too, but there's just there's a wee bit of magic about Usyk. You know what I mean? Everything, the charisma and, and a lot. Now we're gonna we're, Tyson will be here at some point, and we'll have him. We'll speak to Tyson, and hopefully we'll speak to Frank Warren. If Frank Warren's trained, he's also stuck on the same train as Josh Denzel. Once they arrive, we'll hopefully speak to them after the press conference. But let me let me try and throw you forward, Carl. Let's imagine it's the 13th, 14th, 15th of May. We're both in Riyadh. We're in Saudi Arabia for this showdown, this monumental, historic showdown. Not the fury today. What type of fury do you think we might get on that Wednesday at the open workout and the Thursday at the head-to-head -head press conference? Mm -hmm. Have you, you considered or thought about what type yeah, of fury you might get? I haven't get? really, but I'm thinking about it now, and, and I imagine he's going to be serious. Yeah, um, we, we've so seen too. a fury against... You know, remember the press conference when he fought his old mate Derek Chisora, yes. and it was all a bit of fun and games yeah. and laughing and messing N around. Not dissimilar to the fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to see a, a more mm, kind of regimental, strict confrontation, or just or maybe, get, or maybe just not. A bit maybe 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 just serious, okay. just serious. I don't know how confrontational it'll be. He may be confrontational. Um, I think he's going to be very serious, though. Because yeah. one thing we've talked about, and we've talked about this over the years, with when Anthony Joshua had those two fights with Alexander Usyk, and even when Tony Bellew had the fight with Alexander Usyk, and both Joshua and Bellew have offered up the same, the same, the same expression. Don't try and get in his head because mm. you can't get in yeah. Alexander Usyk's head. Yeah. He's too trained in that old Eastern Bloc mm. methodology. He's cold. He's calculating. He's a very warm character. Don't yeah. get me wrong. As you said, who doesn't like him? But he's really, he's really clinical when yeah. it comes to fight time. So I'm just wondering, will Fury waste energy trying Maybe to not. get inside his head? What's Maybe not. Fury, Fury's a smart man too. He may, he may know that. And, 
That, but it's something that Fury does. He, he does try and rail his opponents. He does try and get under their skin. And it works. Can, and it works for the most, but can yeah. he get under his skin? Mm. I'm, I'm not so sure. So you could be right. We could see a more subdued Fury uh, I mean, in the approach to this fight. Well, we, I saw, I mean, we've seen from ringside and we've watched it for other press conferences. I saw him get inside Dillian White's head. Dillian White will deny it, but it doesn't matter. I saw, yeah. I was up close and I saw that fight. But the big one's Klitschko. He done the, Klitschko, he, didn't he? Did, I mean, absolutely did Klitschko. And I was really close. I mean, like, we're talking this close mm. to that. And I could see there was almost a look in Klitschko's face, Carl. And it was, and he looked at his brother, which is a bad sign. If one of the Klitschkos looks at the other Klitschko, you know there's yeah. something wrong. And it was like, I don't like this guy. What this guy's not biting. He wasn't. Yeah. Know, Klitschko did everything. He did high heels. He made himself as tall as possible. They had the weigh-in in private, mm. so none of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Fury fans who travelled to Dusseldorf could get in. Yeah. It was in a private room, really heavy, secu- really heavy secu- heavy-handed security. So there was just about two dozen people there, and they really tried to put it on Tyson mm. on the stage where it was all Klitschko's people. And I swear to you, Tyson wasn't happening. Didn't and I'm cry. convinced Didn't there cry. and then. Yeah. I'm convinced there and then that clicks go. Panic's maybe not the right not the right word, but he was definitely taken aback yeah. by it. Then we also I, don't I, th- I think one of the things was Klitsch never really had it before. Maybe he had it with, with people, but he's looking at these opponents and, and, and maybe thinking do they actually believe what they're saying? Nah, the but I think when he's, look, when he's looking at Fury, he knew he did. He knew he did believe it. See that all that, that run of Americans who he knew was soft. Yeah. I don't, they might have had six packs, but they weren't chiselled nah. inside. They weren't chiselled inside their hearts. And he knew what was going to happen in right. those fights. They could talk all they like at the press conference, deliver all they like before the press conference. Once it came down to it, they would be absolutely. Do you, do you remember hopeless. the sauna conversation they had, um, where? I think Vladimir knew what Fury was talking about, but he acted like he didn't. And there was a Klitschko camp that Fury was in. Yeah, yeah. All the fighters were in the sauna. And and they kept coming out of the sauna. Yeah. And Fury says, I'm going to have a mental battle with Klitschko. I mean, I'm going to stay in here longer longer than him. And he says he did. Klitschko let on he didn't know what he was talking about, but I'm not not so sure. In all fairness, um, it would be hard to beat an Eastern European in a sauna contest. I've tried a few in Estonia. Uh, and about the best I could do was get about seven <laughs> Fury's place, almost killed seven himself just to, get that, just to get that win. <laughs> he was doing flyweight when yeah. he came out. <laughs> but, but wait for it, a win's a win. Yeah, it's as yeah. simple as that. No, listen, I hadn't heard that story. But I do know that when he was um, taken into camp, they didn't spar him. Right. That was the whole thing. Manny had him there to look at him. Yeah. So they sparred a bit with AJ. They sparred with a zillion other fighters. But they didn't spar mm. with Fury. They just watched him. They monitored him, and he worked and as trained a and had the sauna. Opponent. That's clever, though, isn't it? Or may, uh, as a potential future opponent, also to try and get an, an indication of what made them tick mm. and what pushed their buttons, and more importantly, with Fury, what didn't push his buttons. And I've got to be honest with you, I don't think anything, anything pushes Tyson Fury's buttons. If Tyson Fury has any weaknesses, it's in his own head. Yeah. It's not what you yeah. can do to him, it's what he does to himself. I, I, I think it's, yeah, absolutely. You know, there, there, there may be, we, we've seen in the past where he's blew up and he's, he's put on incredible amounts of weight and he's been on the drink and stuff. Obviously, this is a new version of Tyson Fury, but to come from what he came from, yeah. to the position that he's in the now. Po- the post Vladimir ment- condition. Yeah, mentally, he's got to be so strong. And I think that you're right. The only the only one that can get inside Tyson Fury's own head is himself. Do you do you read anything into... I, it's a question I always ask fighters when they get... I've, I asked you when you were fighting, and one of the questions I ask you when you come off the scales or come away from the head-to-head is, did you see anything in his eyes? Now, with Tyson, obviously we're not fighting him, um, but when, when, when we talk to him out in Saudi will you be looking for any, any little signs any little tells is there anything have you sort of have you because you've been around him enough is there yeah. anything that you'd look for no I don't I don't know and I think there's there's always too much taken look the fight's are still yeah. a day and a half and away a day and a half away from the way in so I was always asked them questions yeah. it's, it's nice to give a bit of a sound bite yeah I've seen fear I've seen this but probably you see nothing and I I mean if Fury puts his head down and doesn't look at him or, or, or Usyk does the same. I'm not necessarily thinking that this guy's going to win the fight because that happened. I think it's it's, it's always did, looked did into you, too did much. Did you ever... Hold on a minute. Hold on. Here I, he I, is. I believe the train's pulling out of the station. 
right. Up and demoted. Hiya, oh, Josh. Good to see you, sir. Good Absolute to see you. Absolute pleasure, boys. I'm a sweaty hon, mate. You know um, us around John Fury, is that what's happening? Don't say it. No, 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 We're keeping a voice. We're trying to make out. We're trying to make out. It's Barry Mag- or someone else. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Josh, welcome. Absolute pleasure. You know, I'm buzzing to be. We're finally here. You know, it's been such a long time. So many stops and starts. I'm sure you've alluded to it. No, we've actually just been talking about, I don't know, the shrimps, the beach, the weather. We've done no boxing chat already. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no boxing talk. If we've had small talk, now we're going to do some boxing talk. <laughs> That's beautiful. Now, boys, this, this is so monumental. You know what I mean? I was thinking about on the train up, obviously Frank's there, you know, you look outside, the car park's actually packed full, all the media are here, and you're like, this this is what boxing's about. This is like the pinnacle of heavyweight boxing. I just, it, honestly, I remember like watching boxing with my dad and watching, uh, you know what I mean, the, the back, I got the back end of Mike Tyson, I got the back yeah. end of Lennox, and, and now getting to see these boxers that I've grown up with at the very pinnacle about to become undisputed. And for me, it's... You almost feel lucky to be a part of it, don't you? It's that series of an yeah. event. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This, this, this is what it's all about. And I think mean, when you watch these fights, and you, you, you know, obviously respect to all the weight classes, but it's, that's, this, the heavyweight division is is where it's at. It's the, it's the glamour division. And like having seen Tyson Fury come up when he's fighting, you know what I mean? Relatively small hall shows. You know, I've been around AJ. I've, you know, I've, I've got to watch Usyk in his, in his first fight in the UK behind, well, behind closed doors. The big fight in the UK, behind closed doors he's against Chisora. And it's like this, and then to see it come to this, it's, it's, it's absolutely special. Carl's absolutely right. There is a feeling that, you know, obviously we can talk about the fight and we're, you know, we're here being paid. Let's get that right. But there is this, there is this other thing where, you do feel a degree of privilege. Mm, yeah. You know, you have to stop yourself. You know, mm. we've been up, we've been up all day, Carl and I, uh, uh, just floating around the town, having this, having a cup of tea here and yeah. a cup of coffee here, and you just get this sort of sense of just how special he is, the fighter, and the event is. And you have to. Rem- I, I, I do it all the time. I, I tell this story back when I go to Vegas. Every time mm. I get off the plane in Vegas, sixty odd times, <laughs> and. Every time before I leave the, before I leave the airport, you have to pinch yourself, yeah. you have to yeah, remind yeah. yourself that you're yeah. being paid to sit three foot, six foot, eight foot, nine foot from a ring with 20,000 people behind you, basically. Yeah. That's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that'll be the case in Saudi. There'll be 22,000 people, and we'll be in a position where we can touch the yeah. canvas. That's privilege. No, it's, it's massive privilege, and you, and you can't forget that. And this is like... You know, yeah. We're in Vegas or Morecambe. Do you know what I mean? That's what boxing does. It, we, it's, it's easy it's to confuse huge, the two. <laughs> easy to confuse the two. Do you know what I mean? But it's like this: it, it, boxing will bring a level of, but actually, it'll bring Vegas to Morecambe, and that's how that's how special it is. And we get to go to these fights, and I see you boys. You boys, set, um, if I'm 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 row two, you're row one. Let, let's let's get it right. And. You, you can you could just the atmosphere in the building and the fact that it's in Saudi and the fact that they've they've held some huge fights yeah. as well mm. and the atmosphere is building the way they put on the shows is incredible and I'm glad that it's happening well, now. That's what I'm really interested in. You look at what happened in the the Fury and Ngannou fight, yeah. like the production and the setup and the music acts. And I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but if that's what happened for that fight, now you've got the undisputed. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? I think it's yeah. I th- I mean. I'm buzzing about it. It's go- it, I, it seems I can't see it. It's it has to be spectacular, and I think it will be. I mean, this is. I mean, this for the first time in sort of since 2000, we're going to have an undisputed. Every it's the first time in a four belt era. First time in four gonna, belts, yeah. They're they're going to do something special. And every time we go, we always leave. We're on that flight out of Saudi the day after, and you haven't slept. It's probably six a.m. and you're, you your head's baffled because yeah. you go, "What more can they do?" Mm. Well, they'll find something. <laughs> They'll find them, and you're right about it. Let, let's just put this point out. Yeah. Just Tyson's about to come in. We actually go when we fly home. We leave the venue yeah. at four thirty-five and go straight to the airport and fly. Yeah. So when we're getting on a plane, two and a half hours earlier, yeah. we were leaving ringside. That's the way it works. Here's the there big you go. man. Big lads here. He looks in, in yeah. incredible shape. He looks. He and looks yeah, like he does. He really does. Like we thought he would look. Yeah. I think it is, some. it is it is night and day it seems uh, until you see him in the flesh and you've seen these pictures you're kind of thinking are yeah. they added it a little bit but yeah. now I'm looking at him here I don't think no. they are no that's a, that's, great that's a very slim yeah. looking face that is that is genuinely a very slim looking face Josh do you, do you think that that fight with Ngannou was a bit of a, a wake up call because you know you always, you, you've sat with him on, on a round table and he's gone five week camp for him a five week camp for him and maybe actually he did have a five week camp for Ngannou and it did look like it well, but today I mean he, he's he's the, the you can have a ten week camp 
Yeah. But if you don't engage your head, right, you might as well have a 10 day camp. Remember that? Yeah. Bear yeah. that in mind. And I think he might have had a 10 week camp, but he wasn't engaged. Yeah. It's a Listen, if you, if you have everybody and their granny saying it's going to be an easy fight, a walkover. you start to believe at yourself. And that, I think that's all that happened. And you know, it's hard to get into Tyson's head. But do you think all the the, the media and, and like almost a backlash, I guess it was, from maybe boxing pundits and, and, and boxers saying that, well, listen, like, he shouldn't be struggling in fights like this. If he fights a new seat, he, he, he might really be in trouble. Well, well listen, uh, if you, just quickly before we go to this, I actually think he got off quite lightly after that fight because we well, all just put it down to welcome bad, wherever we you are joining us around the world. And for those celebrating, Eid Mubarak to all of those celebrating. Welcome to Morecambe here in Lancashire. Welcome to the Mazuma Stadium. And of course, this is the home of the mighty Morecambe FC and the hometown of the mighty Gypsy King sat there, the WBC and lineal world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. We are now just under 40 days away from the biggest fight of Tyson Fury's career so far, the undisputed fight, the fight of the century. On May 18th, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as part of Riyadh calendar, there is an iconic, unforgettable event taking place in the iconic capital city. The unified world heavyweight champion Oleksandr Rusik puts his WBA, WBO and IBF heavyweight titles on the line against this man here, the WBC and long-reigning lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. The two will finally collide in a ring of fire. Well, joining us here today are uh, some key, key players in that event who are, who are making this happen. Some of them are, are the movers and shakers. Some of them will be doing the fighting, of course. I'm delighted to be joined by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren of Queensbury Promotions. We have perhaps the hardest working manager in all of boxing right now, Spencer Brown of Gold Star, and perhaps the sweetest man in boxing in the Sugar Hill at the end of the table as well, all with the champion. Now, we're going to hear from everyone up here very, very shortly. But, of course, before that, we need to say thank you to those in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia who are making these incredible events right now possible. So, firstly, let's say thank you to the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And, of course, let's say thank you to the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, his Excellency, Turkey Al al Sheikh. OK, well, let's, let's get going. Tyson, I, I just want to start with you. You are the reason that we are here. We are now, as I mentioned, under 40 days away from the fight, the undisputed fight, the fight of the century. You look in great shape. Is it all systems go? Before I start, I just want to say a massive shout out to Turkey Al Sheikh and all of everyone who's working in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Eid Mubarak to all you guys and have a fantastic, uh, fantastic day. Um, and the answer to your question is, yeah, I'm training hard, obviously. Um, I'm in fantastic shape, obviously. And I've got a massive fight going up, obviously. So I think there's, there's no room for error. There's no room for not training right or any problems so we just got to get through it and 40 days out and feeling fantastic and i know all boxers say the same oh shit like i've had a fantastic training camp yada 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 but i actually am having a fantastic training camp and got a good team around me and everything's going to plan um no complaints working very hard um got me dad in camp this time so i got my secret weapon over there as well um, I got Ty Mitchell in. I got all the boys, all the girls are in camp. So we've got a full, full, uh, a full circus, uh, camp. Um, so yeah, can't, can't do any more really. It, it was heartbreak when the fight was postponed initially. How long did it take you to, to get over that and, and get going again? At first I was a little bit depressed for the first day or so, but afterwards, like all things in life, um, I realized God's timing is impeccable, perfect. It's not late, it's not early, but it's, bang on time. So it wasn't my time to fight for the championship then, but it is going to be my time on May the 18th. So um, I'm really preparing fantastic for it. Let's bring in Frank, uh, Frank Warren. A historic moment on May 18th in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is going to be quite the event and uh, this man looks ready to go here. He does. And, uh, I want to echo as well. Our thanks to His Royal, Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, uh, his Excellency, Turkey Al-Sheikh, uh, and all the team who've made this happen. 
and all the team here at the table who've made it happen. And, um, it will happen on the 18th. We've got the biggest fight of the 21st century taking place. It's never happened before. Four belts on the line. Um, and we're going to find out who the best heavyweight in the world is. I've got my views, and I know my views are going to be right. But it's going to be something special, something extra, extra special. And these things come along, you know, once, well, certainly in this case, on this occasion, once in a century up to as yet. So a special fight with two special undefeated fighters, two undefeated fighters. And uh, the world is going to see who is the best. I'm the best. I'm just defending my bestness against him. <laughs> the, the, linear, the lineal champion... The lineal champion and WBC champion fighting for the other three belts. And, uh... and you know what, Frank, yeah? I read a lot of comments, people, saying, oh, there's four belts. Let's just get this one clear right now. There's a lot more than four belts on the line. you got IBO, IBF, WBO, WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, and Lineal. So for all you motherfuckers out there thought it was four, correction, it's seven. There's seven things on the line here in this historic event. You're wrong. No, I'm not. It's eight. Because the there is the eight. Oh, the real oh, season belt. Thank yeah, you've you corrected. Right. I stand corrected. I was one. Eight. Right. So it's eight belts in one fight. That's got to be a record. Yeah, it has, without a doubt. For you sure. You've got to get another cabinet, you know. I'm going to have to, for sure. Let's bring in Spencer Brown. You've uh, you've been all, all around the country with Tyson Fury in terms of the tours that you used to do, the speaking tours, and now you're his manager as well. This next stage of his career. What are you seeing from this man heading into this fight? I'm seeing a man who's uh, on a mission. He's, he's never looked so good in the last couple of years. And what I'm hearing from the camera, I'm not out there every day to watch everything and to see everything, but everybody's telling me he's in fantastic shape, great order. You know, he's brought his dad in, and it's very important to have your family around him. I think he'll agree with that. Um, the sugar, it's very good buzz about the camp, which is fantastic. Well, let's ask Sugar Hill on this. I mean, you are with Tyson Fury all the time now as well. Since the cut, how, how have things been? Have you had to kind of calm down a bit on, on the sparring? Like, how does it work? Do you, do you readdress everything? Uh, for me, um, it's just watching him day to day. He hasn't really let down since the end of the last training camp before the cut. And uh, I guess pretty much for me, one of the hardest things is watching out for uh, these kind of camps when the fighter is totally ready uh, to go and just kind of pacing him to keep him ready and not overdoing it. So um, it, it's not that difficult, but you just have to watch. You just have to watch the fighter. The fighter will tell you everything if you watch him. And how does he compare at this point to what he did leading up to the Francis Ngannou fight? Uh, you know what? I believe the Francis Ngannou fight was just um, him having so much time off and uh, not being mentally, like, focused as he is for this one here. Um, you know, he was still ready for the fight. It's just a different mentality when you go in there with, uh, at this level for everything, something that he's been waiting for for so long. Um, you know, you, 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 I don't want to say you dream of these things, but these are the things that actually can drive you to be a better person and to bring out your best. Uh, Spencer, and this is a question for everyone, really. Were you surprised with some of the comments that came from the USIC camp? I think Alex Krasik was actually advising you, Tyson, to, to retire as well. Did this cause surprise? Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Because he's, he's, they've got a mountain to climb to get through and a mountain to, to chip away at. And it's not going to be easy for them at all. They've played the game. They've, you know, We've had a few comments from them in the past. Um, Tyson very quickly and very swiftly dealt with that. And I think when he cut his eye, we dealt with it very well, very quickly. We all spoke and, and, and got the date, got the date done. So there was, there was nothing too much to moan about. But, um, yeah, he's got to go through a mountain, uh, Usyk. And I wouldn't like to face this mountain, that's for sure. Well, Tyson, what, at the launch press conference where you uh, faced off with Alexander Usyk, he didn't say a lot at that press conference. Do you think that's him holding back or he doesn't want to get involved? What is it? He doesn't speak English for one. So he speaks a little bit of English, but it's very difficult to speak to a encyclopedia in boxing who speaks fluent English when you speak broken English. So 
I don't think you're ever going to get, you get a foreigner sitting up here with me. You get any American, any British fighter I've ever fought in nearly 20 years as boxing, no one has ever competed with me on speaking. So especially not some foreign man who speaks broken English. Um, as for all the stuff people, the camp said and all that, you know, this is show business, this is entertainment, this is everything. So if they don't talk about what's going on, then people lose interest and yada, yada, yada. So they've got to talk shit. It's a must. If you don't talk smack in this game, you ain't going to make it. There's a heavyweight in here, yeah, he's on his rise. And my advice to him is talk tons of smack the whole way. That's how people notice you. And then when they notice you, then you can show them your skills and do what you got to do. And that's how it's done. And as for, like, all of Usyk's team, they're all lovely, decent people, I think. I saw his manager at uh, over in Saudi recently. I was just having a bit of fun with him. And, but I shook his hand. And uh, he's a nice fella, you know. He's doing the best he can for his man. Um, which, you know, Frank, Spencer, all my team are doing the best they can for their man. So, And if you don't do the best for your man, then you're a pretty shit manager or promoter. That's what I'd say. Um, but as for, like, I've seen some stuff in the media that this is really personal between me and Alexander Usyk. This is not, it's not personal. It's strictly business for both fighters, you know. Um, there's a lot, lot of stuff on the line and all that, but I don't hate him. He don't hate me. He's, he's, a, he's a good good husband, good God-fearing man, so I respect him as a man, as a fighter. He's undisputed um, cruiserweight champion, he's unified heavyweight champion, so anyone would have to respect the man's achievements. Um, good fighter, you know, I've got a, a tough challenge in front of me, but I, I'm very confident in my ability, and I'm very confident that I'll beat the guy. But that's not to say he's shit, just because he loses to me. Like, you know, everybody I ever beat before, even long-reigning lineal champions like Vladimir Klitschko, after I beat him, everyone said, oh, he's a piece of shit, him. Uh, Wilder, all of these guys that I ever beat, they were all shit after I beat them. So please don't say that Alexander Rusek shit after I beat him, because he's not. He's a, he's a unified heavyweight champion, undisputed cruiserweight champion. But my personal opinion is of it is... We have right weight divisions for a reason, and me being an encyclopedia on boxing, and I've studied every heavyweight cruiserweight that's ever lived. Um, when the cruiserweights step up to the big boys, usually they get found wanting. And even the greatest cruiserweights that's ever lived, Evander Holyfield, when he stepped up to the big boys and beat Daddy Bowen and its Lewis, he was found wanting. You can you can beat the average big ones, but you can't beat the elite big ones because size really matters, and we have weight divisions for a reason. And he's going to be found wanting when he fights me on May the 18th. Um, even if you look at David Hay, he was an explosive, uh, good cruiserweight and good heavyweight. And when he fought average heavyweights, he could beat them. But when he stepped up to the big boy in Klitschko, it wasn't really a contest. We look at Thomas Adamek. He was a good light heavyweight, good cruiserweight. He beat some good average heavyweights, good world contender heavyweights. Stepped up to the big boys, beat. So I expect the same from um, Alexander, to be fair. Who was the other one? Um, Sultan Ibragimov. He was Olympic silver medalist. He was 20 and 0. He, he was world, uh, I think he beat Shannon Briggs for the world championship. And he, he was found wanting against Vladimir Klitschko at Madison Square Garden. So I could just keep going on and on and on and on. Let's use Johnny Nelson, for instance. Johnny was very, he was an undefeated cruiserweight when he was cruiserweight. But every time he stepped up heavyweight, he got bashed. So there is, and it's facts, it's facts. I'm not, I'm not slagging anybody off. But what I'm saying is, these are facts. And if anybody wants to go check my boxing history, go do it. I've studied this game all my life, and you cannot prove it wrong. This is my time, my destiny, my era, and my generation. Facts. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit of tactics. Let's bring in Sugar Hill here. Sugar, from, from your perspective... The other heavyweights who have tried to beat Alexander Usyk, Daniel Dubois, Anthony Joshua, Derek Chisora, Chaz Witherspoon, all of these guys... Limited ability. But what did they do limited. wrong? Limited. What did they limited do wrong? Limited ability. They tried the best with their own ability, but it's very limited and Sugar will take over. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really much for me to say with Tyson, uh, you know, knowing it all. So, uh, no, but just listen. Alexander Usyk, like Tyson said is a great champion cruiserweight he's won all these fights in his life um and a lot of it is due to you know his athleticism and things of that nature but he can think 
So he's, ob- he's able to outthink these guys. Whereas they may come in and think one or two things, he's thinking three and four. So, uh, and, you know, Tyson is the same way. Tyson's thinking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of those chess matches. But I definitely agree with Tyson. He's the bigger man, um, the bigger skilled man. And you have a smaller man with those same skills. Or, um, yeah, we'll just say with the same skills. <laughs> and uh, that, that big man that big man's going to win all day. You know, yeah, and and also, look, <laughs> everybody underestimates Tyson's punching power. Everybody, I don't understand why. I mean, I don't know about everybody. Wilder don't, does well, he? he don't. <laughs> no, but I'm talking about you. Talk about a lot of people, and they just don't seem to understand it. I mean, and you're right. Everybody who does get stepped in the ring, they find out about it. There's no doubt about that. And I think that's going to be a, another telling point in this fight, a big telling point for him. I've got a fun fact. Everybody who was supposed to be a non-puncher in my career has given me trouble. And everybody who was supposed to be a dynamite puncher have been all right against. So I better fucking watch me boots. I'm here. Because he's noted as a total non-puncher. But I've been put over by a few non-punchers, Dad, haven't I? Noted non-punchers have put me over before. But the big ones, the big punchers in history, I've, I've been found wanting to keep me nailed down. So that's a little bit of a fun fact for everybody. That's a fact. That's a fact. And he's, he's, he's definitely a tough man, isn't he? Well, Big John's suggesting that Usyk has potentially a weak jaw. Uh, Frank? No. You need to get there's been loads of them, haven't there? There's been loads. And I, I, I put that to, they're putting that much effort into knocking someone out, rah, leave the self open to a counter, crack. Where the man who don't punch as much is, is using his boxing and moving, and he's not leaving himself wide open to get knocked out. Exactly. Frank, you've talked about an Achilles heel for Alexander Rusik as well. Do you want to tell us more about that? Oh, I've, I mean, I've, looked at, uh, I've sort of looked at a lot of these fights going back to the amateur days. And he is a bit of a crybaby when it comes to getting caught to the body. He cries to the referee a lot. And for me, that, was a, that always was, uh, if you want to use the phrase, an Achilles heel or an Achilles body. That's what it, what it is. And he doesn't like it, doesn't Factual he? that is as yeah, well, because he, the only time he's been put over is with body shots. Yeah. Better be have dropped him with a body yeah, shot. Yeah. And um, I think it was the Polish guy. What was the Polish cruiserweight called? Um, was he called Goblaki or something Lewatsky. like that? Something like that. I think he dropped him with a yeah. body shot as well. Yeah. So Frank's he, definitely correct there. And I've, I've sort of looked at that. And I looked at that before we before we made the fight with Dubois. And Dubois, Dubois definitely hurt him to the body. Irrespective of what went on, he doesn't like it to the body. That's for sure. And for me, the biggest exponent of exploiting a boxer's weakness is the professor here. And that's what he does. He, he finds that he's... If anybody's going to exploit it, it'll be Tyson. He's got he's got the mental capacity to do that and keep doing what he has to do. And and, and I I know uh, you know people have asked about predictions. That I genuinely genuinely believe that Tyson will win this fight in an explosive style. And is that is that because we talked about size earlier as well? Is that because he's going to be so much bigger? Can you give us a bit more colour oh, on I, the prediction? I, I think he is. I mean, you only got to look at look at both of them. He is bigger, but the other guy, he's been heavyweight what now for three years? Uh-huh. So he's grown into that. He, he's grown into it. He's carrying the weight, and obviously, you know, if you're struggling at cruiser weight, he's going to be more comfortable. But he's dealing with somebody as, as Tyson said himself. He's natural. He's a naturally big guy. He's a he's a he's he's like. In some ways, like um, like Usyk, that they got good, very good, good boxing brains. But I just think Tyson is—he is the best heavyweight in the world. There's no doubt about that. And everyone's going to talk about the last fight. Good fighters on an off night win fights. They don't see. He's not sitting here today saying it was an off night and that's why I got beat. He had an off night and he won. And that's what good fighters do. They come through it and he comes through it. And he is. He is. He is, in my opinion, in my lifetime in boxing, and I, since I've been doing this, he's been the best at it. He's been, he's been involved in the best heavyweight fight I've ever seen live, which was that third fight. Without, fight uh, yeah. And now you know, against um, Wilder. By the way, Wilder was undefeated heavyweight champion for six years. 
and the biggest puncher, and you're going, you look at his boxing brain, Tyson's boxing brain, that second fight worked it out, what he needed to do, and absolutely done the job. And that's what he does. He's such a, that's why he's such an intelligent, good, super good fighter. And I genuinely do believe, I believe this other fella, by the way, he's, he's not, you know, he's no, he's, he's not going to, he's not just showing up. He's, he probably feels in his heart, he may have seen a couple of flaws in Tyson's last performance. And he'd be working on that, no doubt about it, like any fighter that would do. But at the end of the day, he's in with somebody who is extra special, and I think we're going to see. It. I think we're going to see an explosive, extra special fight. Well, Tyson, we know when it comes to critics, you don't listen. It's water off a duck's back. But I want to bring in Spencer here because you're you're having to see people criticise Tyson Fury, say some outrageous stuff out there as well. Yeah. I mean, how do you take to that? It's. Uh... When you're personally involved with somebody, it's a bit upsetting. And it can get really on your nerves. And, uh, but like Tyson says to me, just ignore it. It's water of a duck's back. But, I mean, I watched yesterday, I watched, I don't know, 20 or 30 different people with different opinions. This fight is causing, is causing massive, ma massive different opinions for everybody. It's, um, it's going to be so, so much of a spectacular... What they've got planned for this fight... Is the fight, but we've got a great undercard. It's, it's going to be spectacular. And, I mean, they've even brought the, uh, their own song out today. Yeah. The Ring of Fire song. So, if, if, you're, if you're on the internet, have a look at it. It's unbelievable. They're pushing all the boats out for this, for this fight. It will be tremendous, fantastic, stupendous. It will be unbelievable. And Turkey Al Sheikh and his team have done such a good job. And uh, they, they do really think a lot of Tyson. They love him. So, um, no doubt about that. honestly, yeah. you know, the relationship he's got with Turkey, I shake, is second to none. You know, he was the first one through the door, and he'll probably be the last one out the door. So, you know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a line that they want to follow, and there's, there's, you know, they want to get more fights to come. And uh, Tyson's mentioned them, but we go one fight at a time. Uh, I think Alexander Usyk might have um, underestimated Tyson a little bit on, on that last performance. But if, if you see him in the gym, his punch power, everything's gone up. He looks, he looks out of this world. He really does. Fantastic shape. Um, his head's, he's very focused on this fight, which I've noticed a lot. Really focused. So we'll see on the night. And uh, we'll see who wins. And uh, we'll see what everybody's got to say then. All the, uh, all the great uh, boxers and pundits and all these people who are... What I've seen, you know, a lot of them don't give Tyson a chance. I don't know where they're coming from on that past performance, on that last performance. But let's see. Let's see what they've got to say after this. Hopefully I get chinned in around then, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, Make that's what they're wrong. saying. You know, that's what they're all... You know, some of them I'm, I'm quite amazed. But uh, let's see afterwards. And uh, like Tyson said, it's a boxing match. The best man will win, and we'll shake hands afterwards. I think if I didn't train at all for this camp, i just come in at like 25 stone, and sank maybe 15 pints of Peroni <laughs> beforehand, and then the next day, going there, what's he going to do? Jib and jab me around? Do you know what I mean? He, listen, take nothing away with him, but he couldn't do anything without Chisora. We all saw that fight. Let's Correct. not be eluded with him. Yeah. He, it was 50-50 fight. Got to win either way. So late, not unless he's around. come on yeah. at 38, 39 year old in the last over two years, like leaps and bounds. And oh, I, I thought the Joshua fight was very close as well. I, I, I thought the Joshua fights were very close. He came out with a lot of marks and, and uh, you know. Um, the uh, second fight. What, the second, uh, second fight especially. Yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, and the other thing is, you're saying 15 Peronis. You're on the Furiosity now. Yeah, so but there's no alcohol in that, uh, uh, Frank. Got no chance. So if I'm going in for a real ding-dong, I need at least 15 pints of brownie. <laughs> at least. Tyson, I was watching a, an interview with Alexander Rusik the other day, and he said that Vladimir Klitschko has reached out and given him some advice. But the oh, advice... that'd be handy advice, how to lose <laughs> the Gypsy King. <laughs> <laughs> how can Vlad, my old pal Vlad, give anybody any advice? Because he would have used it himself, wouldn't he, if he had any advice or any idea how to beat me. It was a, um, an absolute one-sided boxing lesson I give to old Vlad. Yeah. And I believe Vlad cool. was a, um, a very good, good champion, just like this guy is. He's the best of his generation. And I said, dinner, I said, if I can't beat old Vlad, I must be useless. And I'll say it again. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good, clearly. 
That's, that's, that's your headline. If Tyson Fury can't beat Usyk, Tyson's no good. End of. I'm not going to pull any punches. It is what it is. If I can't beat Usyk, I'm no good. Say I'm no good. And then I'll get a rematch of him and say I'm no good again. If I lose again, <laughs> what more is there to do? But if I beat him, I beat another man. Great. Fantastic. On to the next one. But if you do beat him, you get all those belts you talked about, the eight belts, the undisputed. What will that mean? Yeah, I'll add them to the 25 I've already got, shall I? I've actually promised His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh that when I win all these belts, I give every one to him as a present. Let's get a final predictions from it. I mean, look, everyone's going to pick Tyson Fury to win, but give us a bit of colour on it. Sugar Hill, how's this fight going to play out? Knockout. Simple. Yeah. Early? Late? Don't know. Okay. Just when it happens. Knockout. May 18th, we'll find out. Uh, Spencer? Knockout. Okay. Eight. Within eight. Okay, we've got a round out of Spencer. Let's see yeah. if we'll get a round out of Frank Warren. You should ask your... I think you should ask... His dad as well. We'll bring in Big John Fury. Frank, yeah. let me just get, get it from yourself first. Knockout. Knockout. You're going to give me a round like? When he catches him. <laughs> He'll go. Big John, what do you think? Chess match. It's going to be a boxing match between two great technicians. Could end up a bit of a boring fight to watch, because that's what they do. And I think Tyson... <laughs> 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 Buy, yeah. buy your tickets here. Yeah, get your tickets here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've reduced the tickets now, so... <laughs> buy one, get one free. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. And I'm going to go, go for Usek to knock me out in the first round. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. Why not? There you go. We've got everyone's predictions, including Tyson's very curious prediction there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to do some photos down the front, and uh, we'll see you May 18th for the big one. Lovely. Wow. Great to hear from the big man. Right, be back joined <laughs> by Bunsy. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, what did you make of that? Um, well, it was a press conference. Yeah. And we were brought all the way to Morecambe, which is a great place. Yeah. Um, and I thought we might, I mean, it was perfectly good knockabout fun stuff. And yeah, I love yeah. the stuff about the eye. Yeah. But I was waiting for the, and I'm going to fight AJ in November. Yeah. We didn't. Yeah. In the end, it was it was all good knockabout stuff. And I liked the way he looked. I yeah, liked the way he I liked what, yeah. I liked what Sugar Hill said. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, I don't know about you, I know he was trying to make it funny, Tyson, but there was quite a seriousness yeah, he was in it. Serious, especially at the start, yeah. yeah. I think he, I think yeah. he's on it. And you can see in his appearance that he's yeah. definitely in shape. We're still a long way to go to this fight as yeah, well. Like, so yeah. he's yeah. probably going to be in better shape, I imagine, by the time the fight comes around. But, um, there wasn't. We didn't get too much out of it. Yeah, I think, really. when, I think when they when he called for a, for a press conference rather than your your kind of bog standard media yeah. as you were, I think the, the boxing world kind of held some sort held of their breath. They were thinking, right, yeah. is this an announcement? This is my last you, fight. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And you start and you start swirling, but obviously being here and hearing him speak and, and yeah. how positive he is about this fight, and I just feel like maybe he wanted to get a few things off his chest, maybe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they're well, so positive. cold. They, they're doing a lot. Everybody in the Tyson Fury business is doing a lot about all our critics and all our knockers and all our this and all our that. Well, I've got to be honest with you, um, I don't see hundreds of knockers. I see a couple of people that yeah. have become professional knockers. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, mean, I, I, I mean, as I said earlier on, I think he got off light after the Engano yeah, fight. Yeah. We just said, mm -hmm. oh, he had a bad day. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what you feel about that, Carl. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's probably a little bit of criticism going from the performances pre- um, in Ghanu, where it was been universal praise, and then you get a bit of criticism. It's probably just hurt him a bit, hurt his ego or whatever. But look, he's a sensible man, and he's, he's I think he thinks rationally as well. Yeah. He understands that that just wasn't wasn't yeah. 
a vintage, far from a vintage taste but of that, fury. That, that does happen in boxing. You of see fighters have an off night. And Frank Warren had a great line. He said, right. good fighters have an off night and, and win. win. Yeah, they don't line. have a good night. They don't have a bad night and then make excuses. And I'll tell you one thing that was interesting. And you heard it there from John Fury. We probably didn't pick it up on our mic because he was off mic. Yeah. But him saying, this is going to be a chess match. Yeah, it yeah. might be boring. Then they all yeah. made a joke on the top table about, oh, thanks for selling tickets, John. Yeah. <laughs> but... So he, I think John was talking. I think an awful lot, an awful lot of truth, and he was, and he was also doing before the fight was called off. He was saying, "I don't like what I'm seeing in the gym." This was in January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like what I'm seeing in the gym. He's being hit with more punches than he's ever been hit with before. That was John Fury talking about three weeks before the fight was pulled yeah. off. That's fact. It's really interesting that that John has kind of been brought back into camp yes. to give advice and help. And I mean, did that that. That does show that maybe some things weren't clicking. But we yeah, see but, with Tyson yeah. Fury that he's he's much more willing to, to stand and trade and to plant his feet under sugar. And maybe that also means you lose a little bit of that elusivity that he yeah. had. Well, that could definitely happen. Yeah, but I think that has to. I think the style that he has to employ is, is a, an aggressive one. Yeah. We we know that Usyk's going to move. He's not going to stand and try and trade Tyson. I think that, and we'll, we'll talk to him about this as well. I think I, I always feel like he gets a bit of a. Uh, Maybe the credit isn't right in terms of people saying, yeah, Fury will win because he's he's bigger. There's more to Tyson yeah. Fury than just being a big man. Yeah, he yeah. can really box. He can really fight. He gets up off the deck when he gets put down. I mean, so I, I think it's a bit a slightly disrespectful just to say it says when he wins because fight. he's big. So, yeah. so are, you, are you thinking you're gonna see, we'll see more of the Fury that we saw in the second Wilder fight? Wilder, Wilder, the rematch, yeah. the original one in Vegas when, when he said what he was going to do. No one believed him and he came out and did it exactly. I, I think you so. That, I Fury. think we see an aggressive style. I think you, you look at kind of klitschko air style, hit, hold, push down, yeah. lie on him, really make the smaller man blow, yeah. and he's going to target the body. They've talked about the body. They see it as a weakness. To f- and no doubt about it, Usyk has been hurt to the body. He does complain a lot when he gets hit the kind of borderline body shots. <laughs> um, we had a long discussion yeah, about we that after the one, but I, I think that... I, I think that they'll be targeting the body from the start. From the first round, Tyson will be banging them in the body. But he's notoriously not an easy man to catch, to yeah. lie on, to hold. You, mm. He's got to he's got to get a hold of him first. Also, Carl, it's quite hard. Not it's harder. I mean. You'd never fought anybody that was five inches shorter than you, did you? And I mean that nice. No. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's no. not a punchline coming yeah. up. There's no joke coming up. No. You never fought anybody that was five or six yeah. inches shorter. Than they weren't you. allowed. When they're five <laughs> inches shorter, they were too young. <laughs> it was a height limit. Yeah, yeah. it's like when you go on a roller coaster. You had to be, you had to be this tall to fight he Carl still Frampton. Struggles yeah. at all no, towers, no, 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 there's just no need for that. That's the second. That's the second, that's the second sorry, shortest. No, you're not that much bigger than me, George. You know what I mean? Platforms unbind it. Quite seriously, I mean, landing a good body shot on. Usyk, right? When you're six nine and he's down about six two, that's quite that's quite that's quite difficult, mm. you know, because there's not a lot of, there's not a lot to go for. There's yeah. not a lot. Of I know what you mean, but so, I, so I, I think it's, I think it's easier to hit. Like, uh, there is, I mean, we say vulnerabilities. If it's yeah. the first time, yeah. if Usyk it says their body is going down, it's not like yeah, that. Of but not. it's easier to hit his body than his head. Yeah, it's easy, uh, it's somewhere, you know, but somewhere from the yeah, shoulders to the waist. And I yeah, think yeah. I think from the start, from the first bell, they will be. Tyson will be on the front foot. He'll be fighting at a high pace, and I think he's going to target the body. But we also we also saw after that round where Usi got hurt to the body, whether it was whatever low or on the button, whatever it may be. But he got up and he won the rest of the round. And and, and from there he looked like he kicked on. Hold on, hold on one second, Josh. I have a very Back. special message from His Excellency, Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Al Sheikh, and I'm going to put him to the mic. Hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello Frank. Hello. hello Champ. Hello, hello Spencer. Hello, hello Coach. We are ready in Riyadh and we are waiting. I will come tomorrow to London. This is the biggest fight ever. All the world waiting for 25 years now. And we will see in the 18th of May in Riyadh the undisputed fighters winner. Tomorrow I will come with the belt. And I am ready, and all the kingdom is ready, and all the world will see the biggest fight ever. Today, we will start the campaign for the pay-per-view and the ticket and the song of the fight. And there is a lot of surprise. Tyson know what is in my mind and the map for us together. Yes. We want Tyson 
for five, seven, ten fights more. You talk, he know, you, talk. You, you know, you know, you are the, the most uh, beautiful diamond in the boxing fighters. You know how I see you. You know how I see you. And from my position, I need to be in the position fair between you and Ozik. Yeah. And have a good fight, yeah. but you know what you have, what you have in my heart. Yes, I know. I see I know. you, one of the best fighters in the generation, and I am thinking we will have big relationship next in boxing field. Perfect. You know, you are now the most expensive fighter <laughs> in the century. Turkey, I will not. I might be listening. Stop. I will not tell. The numbers, but you know how much you get yes. for each fight. Yes. And you deserve it. Thank you very much, my brother. I really appreciate and, you. And, and we are waiting. And we are waiting. And I miss your father a lot. <laughs> Say to him hi. Yeah. And your family. And take care until the fight. Good luck. And I'll see you soon, brother. I'll see you soon. We will surprise the world. We will surprise the world. 100%. Me and my generation, this is the first undisputed. We see it live because I was young when the last uh, undisputed. I am not like Frank. He see four or five times. <laughs> see you, see you. You know, you know, I respect the English fighters and I see the English fighters is the better, best fighters in the world Get up! thank you so much and see you in the 18th of may and see you frank and spencer soon tomorrow or after tomorrow in london inshallah see you tomorrow see you tomorrow thank you thank, you. thank you thank you very much your excellency and eid mubarak let's see take our shake five to seven more fights he wants to see yeah i mean that's good, isn't yeah, it? That's headline. exciting. We, <laughs> five, seven, or ten. They went oh, as far yeah. as ten. Five, seven, or ten, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't see... Tyson Fury didn't miss a beat. I mean, he just said, get up, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get close. Previous to today, I know yeah. it sounds like uh, the end of Lost. Yeah, Previous yeah. to today, they've had that conversation. <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah. been told, face to face, probably as long ago as last October, yeah. there will be ten more fights. Yeah, yeah. You know it. That wasn't the first time he heard that five, seven, the first or ten. Time he's heard it, that was the first time he's heard it. They can't have mentioned <laughs> about the money. I know how much you're getting paid. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. love to know as well. Hey, listen, I wonder can he land it. Oh, yeah, imagine if he didn't let it slip then. You know, uh, oh, that would have been brilliant. That would have been, yeah. Yeah, been yeah, so yeah, like you said, I don't think HMRC would have been too happy to with Tyson, but I mean, he, he has said, I mean, he, he is show business, Tyson Fury. Not only does he sell tickets, he, he creates incredible entertainment you know, on the biggest stage. I mean, he is worth the money. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the eyes that are going to be on this event is, is yeah. amazing. And Fury and, and the majority of people probably still see him as a number one heavyweight on, yeah, yeah. on the planet. I certainly do. And I think that the number one heavyweight on the planet deserves the most money. That's just the way the game works, yes, isn't it, Pleasure, delighted. We're joined by Frank. There, there we go. Yeah, we, we managed to make right, it. We're Frank. on the trade up together. Train. Frank, here you go. How are you, mate? So, Frank, so Frank uh, before we go anywhere, this uh -oh. man would have made it whoever was promoting him because he's a great fighter. Oh, thank you, Frank. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Now, Frank, five to seven more fights. We just had a little discussion ten, about ten. that. Or ten, sorry, or <laughs> ten. It was, it's such an incredible number, you know, almost disbelief. Are you, are you ready for that? Have you got that in the locker? Yes, let's get the first one out of the way. But <laughs> look, that's how it is. I mean, that's that, that's how our um, the love is and the, and you know the respect that, that uh, his excellency's got for, as he said, British boxers and certainly for Tyson. And he wants to keep seeing him in the, you know, keep seeing him fighting. He's got a tough, tough fight. This is the biggest fight of the century. Yeah. You know, and I'm involved in it, which is brilliant. And I say that because, you know, it hasn't happened. We've been trying to get these heavyweights together for many, many years, all of us, and, when it, and it's not worked out. And it's taken the Riyadh season and this special event that's been delayed, which has been put you know, on, on the 18th now coming on. And it's going to be a special, special night in boxing, not just in boxing, in world sport. Yeah. Because whoever is the, I hate to say this, you know, 
having given him a lot of praise, and he's a great <laughs> fighter. But you know, the blue ribbon division has always been the heavyweights. Yeah. The heavyweight, undisputed heavyweight champion world has always been one of the most famous people on the planet, and that's what's going to happen on the 18th. You, you, that's where it's going to go. You talked about the size of the fight being the biggest of the 21st century, which I completely agree with. But I mean, the four belts on the line, the undisputed champion is going to be declared after this. You got to be going back to the thriller in Manila, the rumble in the jungle. Yeah. These are the sort of fights at this of that magnitude. And, and absolutely the monstrous. backdrop helps as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and and looking at that, you, you know, you, the fights you mentioned involved American boxers, yeah. and all these fights didn't take place in America. They went to. Yeah. In America, in American time as well, Frank. Yeah. yeah so it yeah, took yeah, place yeah, at yeah, yeah. seven in the morning, and, and six and in the, the morning. And the point I'm making is that you know it took that to make them happen mm-hmm. in, back in those days, and it's taken Riyadh and, and and His Excellency and his team to you know to really force the issue on this and get it over the line. So we're seeing you know we're seeing you know modern modern day history in in boxing, and it's uh, and it will be a good fight. They're both undefeated. You look at the the pedigree of. Usyk, you know, from his amateur, everything he's won as an amateur, um, probably the best cruiserweight of his generation, no doubt about that. And he's come up and beaten, beaten uh, not once on two occasions, beaten uh, beaten AJ, who was a lot of people considered was one of the best heavyweights, if not the best heavyweight out there, and done it, and 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 done it as a massive underdog. Frank, could I ask you, I'm going to go back to that first question about the five, seven, or ten fights. It is true, though, isn't it, Frank? And you're not, you're not on the stand here. It is true, though, isn't it, Mr. Warren, that when you are discussing fights out there in Saudi Arabia, you are planning four, five, and six, and seven shows in advance. That's, that's the impression well, I get. Well, that, that is, that's, you know, there's a lot to that. There is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never been so busy at my age, but, you know, it's, uh, it is. And we, you know, we, it's, 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 it, Look, they have a, they have a, a massive budget for the Riyadh season. That's what makes these events happen. Possible. We could never put these type of yeah. events on. I'm talking about an overall yeah. like that because uh, it just financially wouldn't stand up for us. But they, but because of what it's part of, it works. And these shows are just tremendous. The undercards are, you know, every fight on the undercard is a main event yeah. in its own right. And this the the, the thing this the size of this fight and the magnitude of this fight. Obviously, the undercard card is top quality, but you don't even need to have an undercard, <laughs> yeah. do you really? No well, one could be you, a standard. You line. know, it's that, and, and you get a couple of those people. I, I, I see someone like you know, it's minor criticism, but but why would anybody even go there without? You've got what you've all been asking for, what everybody been asking for. Yeah. When is there going to be a unification of all the belts? And that's it. And the rest of it yeah. is is just. I mean, it's just like a a major bonus what you're getting. But the main event is what we've all been talking about everybody in the sport outside the sport those people in the street say oh there's so many belts i don't know who the real champion is you know what on the 18 you're gonna know you're gonna know who the real champion is frank does it feel like you're you're making history here because you know we you you know i think when this was called we're talking to the boys before and it was like there's there's, there's another press conference supposed to be immediate day the the world was holding their holding their breath collectively you know i mean we we, we're seeing tyson up here in a fantastic mood we pray, we pray that nothing happens. Does it feel like when this eventually, when that bell goes, history will be made? It will be, you know, and all of us all are involved in this. And there's a lot of people involved in this, uh, you know, to help make this happen and, and you know, make it, ha- as, as I say, as a special event as part of the Riyadh season. We, it, re- history's been created and we're all, we're all in our s- small ways and big ways. We're all part of it. But the two boxers... Are the guys who are getting in there? They're the ones who are going to determine what that history, what the history is going to be. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. Who's it going to be? It's, you know, it's it's got everything you could want. Two undefeated fighters, the best two heavyweights, bar none, out there at the moment, and we're going to find out. We're going to find out who is the best. Who's got the bragging rights? Who's going to be the guy? Frank, is there any sense from sitting next to him? Where he is at what stages? I mean, you've been around him for a lot uh, of fights. I've got an opinion on it from 15 feet away. I want yours from three look, feet away. Want, nobody training for a fight wants to get injured. And they certainly don't want to get cut in sparring. It's one of the worst things that you can have. But very quickly, the date was rescheduled. Mm. Uh, you know, his eye looks really well. It, it could be, and I think it will be, a blessing in disguise because okay. he, he's going into a camp where he was at the end of his sparring, so he's fit, he's well. 
So he's had to have a few weeks off, obviously, because yep. he was peaking. He's now train, he's now back in train, serious training again now. So he's working towards getting to getting the best out of himself. But what he hasn't had to do is go into a camp and lose weight. Yeah, he's on the money. So he's, he's never he, put the weight back on in any and way, also, shape. And also, he's not like he, he's had a lot of fights in the last um, 18 yeah, months yeah. or so. So it's not like he's burning himself out in the ring, but he's in the tra- training camp. And, and you only got to look at his face. I mean, he looks like he looks like he could fight right now. Yeah. Stun, See, stunning because, because everything had happened, obviously people disappointed with a cut, Frank, and obviously yeah. mad conspiracies. We know what it. You get cut stupid, in the barn. It, it just yeah. it happens. This is what happens. But is the fight even... Bigger now yeah. than it was then. You're absolutely right. I think it is, Carl. I think it's a very really valid point, and I think it has because the anticipation of it all was all that time, and then like, oh, you know, everyone's got a downer. Now they've got to read the, the date. In yeah, but is he going to be ready on that date? Well, the fact of the matter is, he is going to be ready on that date now. And now, him. everybody, everybody who I talk to, if you get, you know, if it's a cab driver, whatever it may, everybody you oh, talk yeah. to, that's all they talk about. All they talk about is the fight. Pleasure, brother, Carl. We're switching over. We're going to switch out. Ooh. The big man for the little man out. That big lad. Would, would, would when you, I'm on the mic, they cry, go. Oh. <laughs> do a little boom. Do a little We were just saying, just complimenting you. I mean, you've heard it a lot, but just how phenomenal you look. I've genuinely. Fence, I've had a clean shave. And it always makes a man look a little bit better, doesn't it? Like you've got a bit of a tan on, and you, you've had a shave, made an effort. And I've had a shower, and I've got a bit of aftershave on, so feeling good. You, I mean, you're looking well. I was having a little look at the eye. It looks, it looks brand new. How's it feeling? Yeah, it's all right. Listen, if it comes open in the first round, fuck it. It is what it is. God forgive me for swearing, but um, yeah, it's, it's a fight game, isn't it? If it opens, a cut open. So what? We continue. You can talk. You talk about how you look facially. It's look how you Hello, look yeah. physically. It's the whole look. I mean, yeah. you look at you. No, you it's, it's, it's an all round. It's an all round. Just the way the way it's walking from yeah, A yeah, to B. Yeah, you just yeah. you just you you're hold demeanour. You hold demeanour and you. Yeah. I'm actually frightened of where I am at the moment. And that's a fact. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm actually terrified of where I am at the moment. Um, because I'm ready to go this weekend, and I've got five more weekends yeah, to go. Cool so, back. like Sugar said, the thing is not doing tons of training, mm. but it's to do less. Because I'm way, like I'm already ready. And if I peak too soon, yeah. then I'll come down with an illness, a flu, chest infection, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. and then it's all fucked. Yeah. God forgive me for the swearing again. However... I got a really. That's the main concern at the moment. is monitoring the uh, training because I'm ready. Tyson, it seems like you know. I know a lot of these insults that they they roll off your back, and, and you're a man who gives as good as he gets. But a couple of team members, you, you've mentioned these people in boxing who maybe put you that maybe criticise you after the Ngannou fight. Use that as a little bit of fuel. Was that, was that something that you needed just to get to add a little bit of spice to this and, and that training camp? Where you not not really, you know, because Van Gogh probably had his haters, but I don't know who they were. And someone who say negative things about somebody else is not relevant, and no one will remember their name. Mm. So when history comes, when it counts, no one will remember their name anyway. Um, and people are going to talk about successful people, and no matter who they are, what success game they're in, what business they're in, then they're always going to have people who, if they're important, if they're worth talking about, mm. there's going to be good and bad comments. So the person who doesn't have any bad comments, it's obviously not the position where people want to talk about it. So I think it's fantastic. I think um, productive criticism is, is an amazing thing. And, um, and as a man who can take everything, give it, take it, whatever, um, it's good. It's healthy. It's a healthy relationship. It's like a love-hate sort of relationship. A bit like my marriage, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> And, and, so, so let, me, uh, let me ask you this. You mentioned, sorry, Frank, you mentioned up there. Going right the, off there. You know, you guys, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're in for it. No, right no, 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 I, I did it politely. I said, that's, that's why I'm not looking yeah. over because he's glaring at me. No, no, quite seriously, um, you, you, you said there that when you had the cut, the foot they used the word depressed. You were a bit down. A bit yeah, I was down, yeah. What, what lifted you? What, 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 what raised your spirits? I think I touched on it over there on the stage. I, I feel like everything's where it should be at any given time and it probably wasn't my time God's timing wasn't wasn't right for me then and God has a way of making everything right and I got a cut so here we are mm. and, and I'm f- feeling good now feeling fantastic looking good I've heard it many times yeah. Um, so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to getting in there and I'm having a good fight 
Tyson, you brought your, your dad into camp this time, and, and you mentioned on stage that, uh, how important that is. What does he bring to a camp? Is there a, he is does there bring like a Spartan training uh, regime. It's like butchering us in the gym, slaughter you type of mentality, old school. Um, but it's also nice to be everything on good terms with your family because everything starts at home, in-house. Um, so if I'm arguing with my wife, then I'm going to have a shit day at the gym or my life's going to be rubbish. But if everything's good at home family's all good everyone's good then you get the best out of everybody and I feel like with me dad now we're all on the same page thank god um, so it, it's better for me everyone I just as, as, a, as a man and as a, a professional sportsman I just want a little bit of um, plain sailing do you know what right. I mean I just don't want all the arguments all the time he said this she said that I just want it to be straight sailing work away everybody work together if someone's got something to say say, say it. it if they don't hold it and that's it. I just want to be, people to be open. Do you know what I mean? I don't um, don't ask people to powder coat stuff. Yeah. Give it me as it is. If I'm useless, tell me. If I'm good, I'm good. Keep it to exactly. yourself. Exactly. We heard from His Excellency, uh, and he, he mentioned maybe even ten more fights. Ten you more see, fights. You, see, you, seem to, you seem to have a brilliant relationship with him. He said he said you get in the readies as well. Yeah. Are we gonna yeah. Are we gonna see ten? What are we talking? Do you know the the facts of the matter are is if if they can line them up, yeah, yeah. quickly. I'll do them. I want to be active. I've said to you, Frank, All the for way. years, haven't I? All the way. Like, yeah. last year, I, I was out of the ring for 12 months. Yeah. Yeah? The year before, what did I have? Two fights. Two fights. And we... The year before that, no fights. The year yeah. before that, no fights. So, it's inactivity. I get the best out of me when I have two, three, four fights on the spin. Bam, 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 bam. And if they can do it, fantastic. If they can't, they can't. We have to go at snail's pace. But it, it is what it is. Plus, can I ask you a thing, a personal thing, not not that personal? You talked about, you know, if you've had a row with someone in your family, it can ruin your day. Yeah. Are you, when you're training for this fight, so it's the biggest fight in the 21st century, one of the biggest fights I've ever been at, one of the biggest fights you've ever been at, Frank, yeah. in every which way, yeah. are you going home at night to your wife and all your kids in your house or are you staying away I mean I'm not I'm not prying I'm just trying to work out yeah, if no, you're I'm summer, in a, I'm in a training, summer, I'm in a training you're in a training camp that's yeah. it good, right, good people have gone away from home for years haven't they yeah, exactly. hundreds of years that's what it, but you, training camps that's what the force so yeah yeah you, you are doing that yeah okay good I just, I just wanted to check that because that would have been well, that would have just been another. Well, that's what he's always. Done. Uh, exactly, yeah. it would have been. Imagine really, I was just going, getting the kids up for Saturday. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to say. Yeah, yeah. School, school run, ballet well, run, yeah. And in between, doing my training. Yeah, for the, for the biggest fight. Yeah. Hey, but the thing is, if, any, if anyone could do it, you, you'd, you'd be the one doing it. That's why I asked, because you, you would be the person that would end up doing it. For that. sure. Tyus, do you feel do you feel the gravity of this event ever, or is it for you? Is it just another box? Because you can say easily, right? It's just another fight, but this 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 holds a bit of weight. This is gravity. This is history making. And do you feel that in camp? No, I just see them as boxing fights. Um, obviously, it's a major event. Like we just said, it's the biggest event that Hall of Fame promoter has been involved in, um, and he's seen it all. So this is a major, major event, you know what I mean? Um, but while I'm training in the gym, it doesn't matter if I'm training for a 5-5 five and five guy or a 16-0 guy. I'm going to do my training um, and do what i got to do. You know, it's, um, it's a boxing fight, pretty much all the same. Um, I know what's in front of me. I've got a bad man in front of me, really, because he's quick, he's a southpaw, he's a boxer, he's beat AJ, the big old sausage AJ, beat him. So he must be, must be mustard if he can beat that big sausage. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, we'll see. You know, we beat Chisora, beat Dubois, yeah, yeah. beat AJ yeah. twice. Only one man standing in his way of total domination with Great Britain. Do you the feel big lad. When everybody else fails, send in the GK. <laughs> the GK. <laughs> Listen. The GK uh, from him. Hey. They asked for the boss, so he sent me, dog. <laughs> we, know, we know you love, like, you, you, you love to trade insults. You love to jab. You, you, you said there's nobody better talking on the stage than Definitely you. Definitely not. But I just want to say, AJ's a big fat sausage, for sure. <laughs> there yeah. we go. It's, it's, we're live. Shall right, I say right, a big right. useless sausage? You can say whatever you want, Tyson. Yeah. This, is, this is your stream. AJ, I know your... it's been rattling your cage. You big useless sausage. <laughs> and when I beat this guy, and you've been beat twice, I think. Get up. Slink. <laughs> I like that for another insult. Sure, sure, surely, <laughs> surely, surely. I know we don't want to look. Don't call me surely. That is, that is a, that you, you traded insults. That's that's got that's got. To no, be it's just me insulting him. It. It's got to be one of the ten fights that, that, that it, Turkey it, wants to see. It'll probably be two of the ten fights. Yeah. So that'll take me to four. There we go. So we got six yeah. after that. 
There we go. Shall I'll I just name the ten? Sack you might. No, well. I'll, bro, right, go on. On. I'll do. Bro, I'll do bro, Usek. Bro. Usek. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do AJ. AJ. If he yeah. don't get beaten in the meantime, that's four. And then I might chuck a a Dubois in if he's back up there, which he is at the moment, or a Joe Joyce. Joe Parker. Joe Parker. Chuck him in there. Mate, that's seven. You know. yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven. Go to America. We'll chuck in some Amer maybe Deontay Wilder if he gets back in a yeah, fourth yeah. fight with old Deontay. Um, maybe a European guy. Maybe Agid Cabayel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or the tenth. Who would the tenth fight be? Big ten. Who would the tenth be? Ten, 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 ten. Come on. Moses Hitama. No, definitely not. <laughs> 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 Think I'm stupid? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, probably do like a trilogy with like Usak or something afterwards. Oh, fair play. Whatever. Well, 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 I'm still going to take it later. I'm glad I'm you've got it. Frank, you know, you, 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 he's doing your job for you. You know what? I think that is all we got time he for. So that's job for him. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cheers, guys. Frank, Thank absolute you. Absolute pleasure. Tom Muncy. Always a pleasure, my man. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you. Fancy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I nearly put the mic down. I think he's, he's done it. He's ended the show for us already. <laughs> Ten fights. Yeah, you know what? We're doing it two years. You know what? I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Absolute Thanks, pleasure. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, brother. My man, enjoy. Huge fight. Mate, team. Can't wait for it. Real fight. Let's Proper go. fight. Proper fight. <laughs>